Hello YouTube and welcome back to the final Sensor Spotlight, at least this revision of it. Today we're going to be looking at the Ray Sensor, an extremely useful one, especially when used in combination with Python. So what does the Ray Sensor do? It basically shoots a straight line, like a laser or a ray, in a direction and detects whenever it uh, hits an object. So, uh, before we get into the sensor itself, let's take a look at the example. Here we have our friendly orange cube, and we can move him around and make him jump. And we see we have the evil monkey over there on the other side of this wall. Now, as long as we stay behind this wall, we are safe. But if we move out from beside the wall, the monkey is able to start shooting at us. And that is because the monkey has a ray sensor attached to it uh, that is hooked up to a add object actuator. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the sensor itself. Okay, here we are looking at the sensor. And as you'll notice, it has all of the same buttons as the always sensor. We also have a property or material selector here. We have a property setting here. We have an axis selection, a range setting, and an x-ray mode button. So let's start off with the property material selector. This chooses whether you want the ray to be triggered by a certain material or a certain property. If we choose material, we get a drop-down list containing all of the different materials in our current game and we can select any of those. If we choose property we have to type out the name of the property and the spelling and capitalization has to be exactly the same as what's on the object that you want the ray to be triggered by. Next is the axis selection and this just chooses which direction uh, of the object the ray will shoot out of. So for this example I'm using the negative y axis and if we look at our Suzanne model, if we turn on the uh, display axis, we can see that here, oh, here is the y axis which lines up with the world y axis right now and so in order to see in front of Suzanne, I need to use the negative y-axis. Uh, so if I were to choose, say, positive z-axis, that would then shoot the ray straight up. And this is using a local axis, uh, so if I were to tilt Suzanne on the side and use the z-axis, it would then follow that z-axis, which right now would be uh, going off at almost a 45 degree angle. Next we have range, and this changes how long the ray is. So a range of 20 uh, means the ray will go for 20 blender units and then stop. Next is the x-ray mode, and this changes whether or not the ray goes through objects that don't have this property. Uh, so for instance, if I turned this x-ray mode on, uh, that means that Suzanne would be able to see through our wall and just shoot the player uh, right away. Uh, now this may be a glitch with the empty objects, but on the empty objects, if you have tap or pulse mode on, it doesn't make a difference. It will constantly activate all of the controllers that it's attached to as long as the sensor is positive. I don't know if that's a bug. I really don't think that would be the intended function, but it would appear to work on uh, all the other types of objects. So that's a look at the logic brick. So now we're going to hop into Python and see what some of the useful attributes are for it. Okay, so here we are in Python. We see we get the sensor the same way as all of the others. Moving on, we have configuration attributes. This one has a ton of them. Starting off, we have axis. And this is the same as the radar axis setting. This will either get or set which direction uh, the ray is going to shoot out of the object. So there will be a little pop-up in the video showing which integer uh, 
means which direction or which axis. So pause that if you want. But uh, moving on, we have range. And this is changing how far the ray will go before it stops. Next up, we have use material. And this is basically saying whether we want to use a material or a property. This will either return or take a boolean. Uh, so here I am setting it to false, which means that we want to use a property. Next up, we have prop name. And this does two different things. If we are using property mode, like we are here, uh, then it will either return or take a string that represents the property name that will set the sensor to positive. Now, if we are using material mode, in other words, if this was true, this would then be the name of the material that we want to use. And so it would either uh, take or return a string uh, representing the material. Next up we have use x-ray, and this is the same as hitting that little uh, x-ray button on the sensor. So this will either return what that button is set at, or it will set it. Moving on, we have the status attributes, the first of which is hit position, and this will return a list of three floating point numbers, and this returns the position in world space where the ray has hit an object. Uh, so this would be useful if you're making a first person shooter. Uh, this would be useful to be able to tell where a bullet has hit and maybe place a bullet hole uh, at this position. Moving on we have the hit normal and this is basically the rotation of the face uh, that the ray has hit. It returns the normal of the face that was hit. Again, this will return a list of three floating point numbers. Uh, so hit position is useful if you want to know where to put the bullet hole. And hit, so hit normal would be useful for rotating the bullet hole so it lines up with the face that you've hit. Next up we have hit object, and this just simply returns the object that was hit by this ray, or that has triggered this ray sensor. And finally we have ray direction, and this will return a list of three items. Uh, these three items will look a lot like the hit normal, only these represent the direction that the ray is facing. So again, for instance, this will return a list, the first item of which will be the x axis or x angle, I believe that's the cosine of the angle between the x-axis of the ray and the x-axis of the world. Okay, so that's really it for this sensor, and really all of these sensors in the Blender game engine available at the time of recording. I may need to add more videos to this. We'll find out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to try and help you out. If you have any suggestions for a future tutorial, leave them in the comment section down below or in the link in the description. The next video, I'm not going to say the next sensor spotlight, we're going to be covering the controllers. I believe we'll do all of them at once. But until then, I want to thank you guys very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.